What's up YouTube? Today we got a full brake job to do on a Peter car. So you guys take a look and we'll show you how we do it. This is so man in the country that I know. No money in what he used to grow. No, he don't care what people think. When a farmer turns into a hippie, times a hard in Mississippi. Guys, Bill's got the old handy dandy tool cart out here. He's gonna run through here and show you what we gotta have to do this job, and then we'll get to it. Hey, right, we got a 7 16 socket, back of socket adjusters off, long flat head screwdriver, pry bar, pair of channel locks, a handy dandy door trim removal tool, this hammer, a flat head screwdriver. All right, guys, first thing we're gonna do. For safety reasons, we want to make sure we get the front wheels chopped, and we're going to use a 20-ton air jack to jack it up, and we're also going to use a wheel dolly because them bad boys are heavy and aggravating. So let's get to it. Right, before anybody says anything, I know you guys are going to be like, "Wow, you jacked up both." you know, both axles, front axle and back axle. Why are you digging up both axles? Because we're gonna do all of them. So we're gonna do this side and we'll move to the other side. So that's why answering the questions before you ask. As y'all can see, we're using a cool tool to take the lug nut covers off. Let me see that bill. Y'all can see it's supposed to protect them, but as you can tell, they're kind of rusty. We don't want to scratch no rust off of them, then they won't match. We don't have to replace them all, so that's why we use that one. All right, we got all of our chrome acorns off there. So the next thing we're gonna do is jerk the lug nuts off, and then we'll show you guys how we use a wheel dolly to keep from wrecking our back. All right, guys, next thing we're gonna do is use this wheel dolly. Um, I know some guys are gonna fuss and gripe about using a wheel dolly, but these wheels are heavy. I've got a junkie back and so does Bill, so we've got the tools, so we're gonna use them. Like I say, we might not do it the right way, but we do it the way that works for us, and not having back aches is always a plus. All right, guys, Bill's fixing to um, adjust the slack adjuster, you know, to take all the pressure off the brakes. Let me see if I can get in here and show you guys where it's at. You can see Bill's got on the orange glove, so you can see where he's at right there. What he's doing is he's going to back the brakes off, as you can hear them. All right, he's got the back, uh, backs. He's got the brakes backed all the way off. So we'll do the back axle the same way. And uh, well, that's all you gotta do really to that. All right, we got the brakes backed off. As you can see, we put a piece of cardboard down on our floor. And the reason why we do that is because brake drum is a booger to get off concrete. Like you'll sweep that stuff up for months. So while Bill's gonna show you how to do this caveman style with getting these brake drums off there, especially since we know we ain't gonna use them no more and they are g -yunk. Usually I just use a big tire hammer. I hit it one good time and it'll usually break loose. <laughs> Told y'all it's caveman style. Guys, you can tell we got the brake drum off, of course, and while Bill's gonna start right here where my light is and show you guys what we're gonna do. Well, where these pins are, you've got a little keeper in here. 
that hold uh, the hold them in place. What I usually do is I'll come in on the inside, pry them out, get them out of the holes. And we'll show you guys what he's talking about there, that little metal like a little, looks like a piece of um, That's part spring of it right material. Let me show you on the new ones what he's pulling out of the way. And he's pulling the spring down where he can get those rotor cams or whatever you call them off there. You see the S cam right there. That's why it's called an S cam because it looks like a S. Now usually on this part, sometimes you got to tweak your uh, S cam a little bit to get your spring to where to come out. A little tricky on these eating shoes. Makes you appreciate those Q pluses, don't it? Yes, sir. And there you go. There's your brake shoes off, guys. All right, guys, you can see we've got the old shoes off. The new shoes are laying down here beside them, and Bill's going to talk to you to make sure that you know you're putting the right shoes back on your truck. One of the key points you want to look at on these, uh, on the eating shoes, is look at your, your curve. Make sure that's right. Make sure your spring mounts are the same. Your uh, Q's and Q pluses are made a little different. This hole's a little bit smaller. And you've got, actually got a hole here instead of a pin that runs through. Uh, these are pretty common. Eating cues are pretty common on your trucks. Uh, your cues and Q pluses are, or your Q pluses are pretty common on your trucks too. But uh, just with this application, it, it calls for the uh, the eating cues. And here we got the hardware kit. And guys, always use the new hardware. Don't cheat and use the old crap because, I mean, it comes with it. So, use That's, the new stuff. Yeah. That's what we was talking about earlier. That little spring thing that he was having a prize from the inside. And that, when you got these in place, these go in that hole. All right. We're gonna set the shoe up here. Get these old ones out of the way. I don't know if it makes any difference, but usually I'll take one and turn this part towards the top, take the other one and turn it towards the bottom. Most of the time when I've taken them off, that's the way they've been, so that's the way they go back. Hang up there like a deer. <clears throat> and this is the tricky part. When you go to bring this back around, if you're not holding this top shoe, that's going to pull that top shoe around and they'll end up falling off. I'll go ahead and put my spring on that pin. Go ahead and hang it there. And I'll put my knee in it. He's just hooking that spring back on the pin that's running through the shoe from the factory. Behind you. 
All right, guys, if you'll look in here, make sure that your spring is in there and hooked like it needs to be on the top and bottom. Sometimes you may have to take a pry bar and move it over and get it centered where it needs to be. All right, once you got the roller seated on the cam, take and put these in the holes like they need to be. Sometimes you gotta play with it a little bit to get them to roll around. And usually when I get this far, what I like to do is take a pair of channel locks and reach in here and grab hold of them and make sure that they're in the holes good. Just like so. And that's it. Ready to go back with the drums. All right, here you go, guys. We'll stick the new drum back on there, let you guys see how we do it. And uh, should be ready for a tire. We'll stick the lug nuts back on it, we'll torque them back down with a three quarter inch torque wrench. You don't want to get your fingers in the way of this. Yeah, that thing will mash the dog snot out of them. If you ain't never seen dog snot, you don't know what I'm talking about, but trust me, it ain't good. So that's all there is to that. And then of course, we'll adjust the brakes back up. Um, you guys, we'll show you how to do that when we get to that point, but we're gonna go ahead and do this front axle and then we'll adjust them and show you guys how that works. One of the tips, guys, that we do, we write the mileage on the brake drum and also the date on it. And that way we kind of know what the life is on our drums and our brakes. And that way we kind of help keep a judgment of how long it's gonna take and what kind of time frame we're looking at. And we know what kind of uh, wire drivers we're putting on our brakes. Okay guys, during our initial brake inspection, the reason why we put brakes on the truck, as you can see, we was looking from this side and you can see the big chunk gone, so that's why you always want to inspect your brakes. We got, uh, as you can see, one, two, three, four new brake drums and shoes on. Bill's gonna talk about how we go about adjusting the slack adjuster to get your brakes adjusted back up. All right, on these, I wanna tighten them all the way down against the drum just like anything else. Till they bottom out, and back them off half a turn, put a, scrap, put a screwdriver in your uh, bottom of your slack adjuster, pull it, make sure you got an inch to two inches of travel on it. And back her out the door, let him go. All right, guys, we're gonna get all four of these adjusted up. And uh, that'll be all of it. Like I say, we've four got our- Fours are ready to go back to the Napa store. Be able to finish adjusting all four wheels back up. We'll stick uh, the three quarter inch torque wrench back on it. Get them all adjusted, you know, uh, torque back down to 450 foot pounds. And we'll get a little chrome maker and stuck back on it. And uh, she's good to go for a, a little while longer. Like always, guys, if you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe down here below. You guys have a great one. We'll catch you next time.